So previously, I introduced you all to the Modular Coil, an idea I had for a 3D printable modular coil that could be used in a motor or a generator or what have you. However, I thought it needed a little improvement. You see, this is the version one. And the thing is, I was going to just unwind this and wind it with thinner wire and call it a day and put some of these into my generator. However, I thought I needed to make a V2. So that is just what I have done. Here is the version two. And as you can see, it looks a bit different. It looks a bit scruffy as I ended up printing it in the wrong orientation and not realizing that the supports would be quite difficult to remove. But nevertheless, it's the new version of the module coil. Now, the first improvement over the V1, something that has very little to do with the actual 3D print itself, is the choice of wire size. Previously, I used 0.4 millimeter wire, and that meant that because the wire is thicker, you get less on a coil, which means that you don't get as much voltage from a single coil. However, I have some 0.2 mil wire here. This is much thinner, and because it's thinner, you can wind more of it around a single coil, more turns equals more voltage, and so on and so forth. In aid of this, there are a couple of improvements that I've made to the actual design of the 3D print. One such improvement is the widening of the cross section of the coil holder. And what this means is that the V2 compared to the V1 has a deeper wire cavity, which means it can hold more wire, it can hold more turns of wire. In fact, way more turns of wire, I imagine, which means that you get probably a more powerful coil by using the V2 over the V1. Additionally, the inner walls of V2 are a lot thinner than V1. And this provides a couple of benefits. It increases, along with the deepening of the cavity, the wire capacity of the coil itself. And also, a crucial benefit, it decreases the space between the actual wire and the rotor which increases the efficiency of a generator or motor. If I have a spinning rotor with coils near it that are generating current, no matter how close I get the actual coils to the rotor, there will always be a certain amount of space between the actual wire and the rotor magnets because of this material here. So if I decrease the amount of material between the actual coil and the magnets, that will also increase the efficiency in turn. Because this thinner wall means that I can place the rotor even closer to the coil, which means that the magnetic flux from the spinning rotor can penetrate much deeper into the copper wire itself. Okay, enough theory. You've seen this 3D print bear. Let's get some copper wire onto it. Handy trick for winding module coils is to actually you know, screw a little bit of wire to the coil holder itself. So if we get a tiny little loop of wire here, and if we screw that to the actual coil holder itself, that will secure the end of the, you know, that will secure the start of the actual coil and it will make coil winding a whole lot easier. And as you can see here, I've fastened a loop of wire to the actual coil holder using one of the ferromagnetic carbon steel screws. And now I can start winding. So I've wound about 300 turns of 0.2 millimeter wire to this coil holder. And it's in no way perfect, but it, it still serves as a good demonstration of the concept. Anyway, now it's time for me to add our ferromagnetic screws into these holes here, which will aid in the magnetic flux. And there we have it, our finished V2 module coil. 
the only thing that's left now is to test it. So that's what we're going to do. So here we go, similar setup as before. Let's give it a whirl. So with 300 turns of 0.2 mil wire on this V2, and with me, you know, not winding them as cleanly as I perhaps should, we got pretty close to 600 millivolts, which is a vast improvement over the V1. Um, I, I was still, you know, just using my hand to turn the rotor, and the rotor was slipping for other reasons. But this is still, you know, as I say, quite an improvement over the V1. And I think that if I used this in my generator, perhaps with even more turns, this coil here has uh, 300 turns on it, although I definitely think it has capacity for a lot more, perhaps even up to 500 turns of 0.2 mil wire. So there's a lot of uh, headroom there. And if I was to utilize that headroom, I would get a little bit more oomph out of a single coil. Theoretically, I could go for an even thinner wire to wind even more turns and get an even higher voltage with this coil. However, when you start getting into, you know, um, 0.1 mil, 50 micron uh, wire sizes, you start running into uh, current limit issues. You know, the, the current capacity is a bit low for, the, for, for that wire thickness. And so I think that 0.2 mil wire is the sweet spot still. However, your mileage may vary. But anyway, I'm off to make some more of these, and my next video is going to be discussing the rotor design for my new generator. I'll upload both the V1 and V2 STLs to this Thingiverse page. The V1 should already be up there, but you can view my Thingiverse page for the V2 as well. And I will see you in the next one. Take care, stay safe, stay inquisitive, and I will see you there. Bye for now.